Hey, what's happening everybody, Valentine here, and I'm giving you this time a quick introduction to publishing Postman test results in GitLab, especially useful if you're using merge requests. So if you're not running your Postman test in GitLab and you want to learn how to do it, make sure you check the video that we'll get a notification for right now, because I've showed you there how you can really set up everything in GitLab and then come back to this video and do it. In this video, I will show you how to publish the test execution report in GitLab. And as you will see next, this is particularly useful if your project takes advantage of merge request. And the main idea is that instead of manually inspecting if a job failed or something went wrong and checking this report or viewing the HTML report, if you're using merge request, it will be much easier to display which test failed directly in the merge request. And let's go directly and change a bit our configuration. I can assure you this is done in two minutes and it's working very, very nice. So I'll go ahead and change the configuration that we already have. So the first thing that we need to change is to add the JUnit report as well to the list. So we're so we already had a CLI and the HTML report, but let's go ahead and edit the JUnit report because this is the report that we'll be publishing. This is something that GitLab can understand out of the box. And additionally, as with the HTML report, we'll specify where should this report be saved. So in order to configure that, we're gonna use the flag dash dash reporter dash JUnit dash export to specify where this should be saved. I'm gonna save it to report.xml. Okay, so once Newman runs this collection, it will generate this file, but still out of the box, not a lot will happen. And we need to add another configuration to our artifacts. Remember the artifacts, this is what is saved after the job. And in this case, we are gonna configure the reports. And we're gonna specify exactly that this is a JUnit report. And the name of the report is report.xml. So that's about it with the configuration. Let's change it and create a merge request and see how everything works. Now, in order to create a merge request, all I have to do is go to branches and create a new branch. So let's call this something like new future. And let's imagine that we, first of all, don't make any major changes here. So let's add simple file or something like that. This is just a test. So this should have absolutely no effect on how the tests run. Now I can create a merge request. And I'm gonna leave the defaults as they are. And I'm gonna simply submit a merge request. Now once I do that, I will be able to see it under merge requests. And you will see here that the pipeline is still running. So it's executing the test. But let's wait a bit and see how this merge request will look after the pipeline is completed. So once the pipeline is complete, you will see here on the lower part that a test summary has been generated and you can of course expand it and see more information about the test summary. But first of all, you notice that everything is working. So no, there, there were no problems with this feature itself. So what we can do next is to make another change inside our branch and now make the test fail. So for that, we're gonna go directly and change the collection. And this is just a quick way on how to make something fail. And we're gonna replace here bar with foo. So going back to our merge request, we now have to changes inside the pipeline will run again. 
and when it completes it should show exactly what is wrong without us having to go inside the pipeline itself inside the job that executed the pipeline and see the error that has occurred great so the pipeline completed and we can see that it failed and right here on the test summary we'll see that one test has failed we only have one test and it failed and we can click on the expand button and you will see here which test actually failed and we will even get a label that this is something new from the previous run and so on so it will make it a bit easier to see right inside the merge request which tests actually failed and why and what happened and if you even click the name of the request you will see easily okay expect it to bar to deeply equal foo so the idea is to make it a bit more integrated with the GitLab CI interface on when it comes to running these requests and seeing exactly what failed and making it more user friendly. And as you saw, it is only a very simple configuration that needs to be changed. What we did, we added the JUnit reporter and we configured where the report should be saved. And then regarding the artifacts, we defined another configuration for reports and we said this is our JUnit report. So pretty easy, pretty effective if you're using merge requests and your bur and the branch itself is creating another piece of code and can test against different versions of your software using Postman test and this is amazing and you can really take advantage of this future. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of a possibility of showing this request directly in master. So the concept of GitLab CI in this case is to have a very solid master where you do not directly commit, but you only work your way through the master if you have branches and merge requests and all the tests happen in branches and then you simply merge in master. Hope you find this tutorial helpful and if this is the case, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on Postman, GitLab, Jenkins and many, many other tools. Guys, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.